There was a time when Alaska was king, not just in size, but in legend. Back in 1985, a man named Les Anderson caught a 97 pound Chinook salmon less than 15 miles away from where I'm standing right now. People called that thing a monster. It was gigantic, the size of a small child. Really, was it a freak of a fish or was it just a sign of how abundant Alaska actually was? Today, the rivers are nothing like they used to be. And it's just a short few decades later that here I stand on a river with its wild king salmon population along with all the other ones around here completely decimated. Now, what's causing all this? It's probably a bunch of things all put together adding up to something big. The main thing is that the kings stopped showing up. The ones that did show up are smaller. The runs in size are smaller overall. The giants are rare, few and far in between. I mean, if anyone's ever even seen one. In some places, they just completely disappeared. Is it the warming oceans? Is it the bycatch? Is it the loss of habitat? Is it over harvesting? How many people come up here and fill up coolers full of fish, freezers worth of fish, send them back home somewhere else give them away, filling other people's freezers. Whatever happened to just taking exactly what we need? Now I understand because I'm the only fisherman in my family and I feed all of them. They all, they all come over and fish out of my freezer all winter long and I get it, I get it. But what are we gonna do? Today, the rivers, just like this one here, the Kasilof, just south of the famous Kenai River, they're barely hanging on. I mean, this right here is probably one of the only fishing spots in the entire, I don't know, Kenai Peninsula, maybe the whole state that you can even keep, catch a king and keep it right now. And I say catch a king lightly because I haven't caught mine yet. I'm out here every single day trying to catch that first king salmon. There's no bait allowed. They're restricting the amount you're allowed to take. Pretty soon they're gonna restrict the hours that you can even fish, just like on the Nanilchik River. This weekend, the Nanilchik River opens up for hatchery king fishing only. And I grew up in Nanilchik, and that was a place where you could catch a 40 pound king salmon on the regular. I'm talking Dock loads of people catching fish one after another after another. And now you don't see anybody filling up those docks. You don't see any coolers getting filled up and you don't see, you don't see all the fun happening. And worst of all, you don't even see the fish. There's no wild kings left here in Alaska and everybody needs to know that. So that dream of showing up and catching that big one it's probably just gonna stay a dream. You probably heard of the Kasilof River. It's one of the best places in Alaska to even have a shot at catching a king salmon. But what if I told you the fish you're chasing here aren't even wild? Yep. Today I wanna tell you about this river and it's hatchery only kings. The fish here that you're catching, they probably were born in the tub. Raised in a tub and dumped in this river upstream and put here for all of us to harvest. With a fishery like this entirely supported by hatchery king salmon, it makes you wonder, if we keep dumping salmon into the water, what happens to the natural salmon that were here before? Where are they? We don't even hardly see them anymore. The Crooked Creek Hatchery was built in 1974 to supplement the king salmon run here. It collected returning salmon, took their eggs right out of them and raised them into little tiny smolts and then they released them back into this river and it worked you know people are catching more fish you'll see boats coming down this river right here full of people trying to catch those hatchery only fish they're born in a tank and they're raised to swim and then they get turned loose into this river to swim out into the ocean and come on back and basically put here to harvest but what happened to the hatchery it's shut down it's closed up and done, and yet the kings still keep coming. So how are we getting these hatchery produced fish? Even though the building's out of service, the Alaska Fish and Game still collects the adult king salmon each year, and they use the brood stock, and they grow the offspring, and they release them right up at Crooked Creek and fill this whole river system up. So the hatchery's dead, but the program isn't. Now that's kind of interesting. When they collect that brood stock, they're collecting them out of those wild fish. So then they're taking a wild fish's eggs and they're turning it into a hatchery fish. 
Does that fish ever have a chance to create more wild king salmon? I don't see how they could if we're turning them into hatchery only fish. Are we ever going to see the wild numbers come up if we keep taking their eggs and turning them into science projects? I'm not complaining about the hatchery system around here because I'm out here and those fish taste great and I love catching them because catching a king salmon is probably the most fun thing you can do when you come to Alaska. But the whole idea of, of the fishery is it's all man-made now. That whole wild Alaska appeal that we all were after growing up trying to plan decades to come up to Alaska or growing up in Alaska fishing these wild fish. They're not even around anymore. So it's important for you, the angler, because you can keep the hatchery kings. And you can tell because they clip the little fin off the back of them and they release them into the water and they grow up and then you know right away, that's a hatchery fish. And if it's a wild fish, it's gonna have that fin on its back and you're not even allowed to take it out of the water. Don't even disturb it. The fish and game's going to grab it up river and turn it into a bunch of hatchery fish for you. So let them handle business. Now this matters because this is one of the few programs in all of Alaska where hatchery kings are meant to be harvested. It takes the pressures off the rivers like the Kenai River which has been hammered. There are no more kings to catch in the, in the Kenai River. That dream of, of matching Les Anderson's 97 pound lunker, that's, that's all long gone. You're not even gonna have a shot at even doing that anymore. So that guy's record will never be broken. And you know what, if it gets broken, I would just be tickled about that, but I don't think it'll ever be broken. Have you ever caught anything even close to a 97 pound king salmon? I mean, most people have never even seen, I've never even seen anything that big. I mean, 60 pound king, okay, but, but, rare even today. Of course, you still have to go out and find one, hatchery or not. These fish are extremely hard to catch. They're few and far between. On this river especially, they shoot right up this thing. If you're not on the spot at the time those fish are coming through, you're not going to catch one. So keep that in mind if you do decide to come down here and target a hatchery king salmon. Your window of opportunity is very slim. Starting now and it's going to run through June. This is going to be the only place where you're going to find people catching king salmon unless you're jumping down on that tiny little Nanilchik River, which is going to open up for the next three weekends. And that's it. So the next time you're drifting on the Kasilov River, remember, you're just fishing a man-made run in a wild place. And that's what makes this river so fascinating. I mean, it still has a population of fish that we're allowed to go after. We're mixing science with salmon and a little bit of Alaska luck. And hopefully we could all get out there and be lucky enough to catch a hatchery king salmon. Just be careful. If you do hook into a wild one, set it back into the water. Because someone upriver has got to pull that thing out and, and breed it for you. So you have an opportunity to come back out here and fish again another day. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll see you next week. Have a good one.